So today I want to try and take this portable CNC router that I've got and turn it into the ultimate woodworking joinery machine for making stuff with. Create some parts files, setting up a jig that I designed, run some test cuts, see how, see how they fit together. Who knows where it'll go from there. With CNC and especially with portable CNCs, half of the challenge is just figuring out how to hold your workpiece. I'm just going to clamp them together, try to get this first one knocked out and then I'll, I'll refine the refine the design from there. The idea here is to have the router up with a little bit of space under it like so. I can take the boards that I'm going to do the ends on and then the router will just go cutting across this way with free space under there so that it's not cutting into the work surface or anything like that. To do that I need to have some way of holding the boards here and a really consistent way with a reference point. When I'm done with the first board, take the second board and have it lined up the same for getting that B cut. I've got this piece clamped and ready to go. I'm gonna use this as my reference board. This is the backstop and clamping board. I was gonna be running the router the other way, but the odds of having a wider board versus a Thicker board's better, and this is it's got six and a half inches of travel this way and eight and a half inches of travel the other way. So it'll go back and forth this way, shift over once, back and forth, shift over once, back and forth. Now I just need to attach the CNC machine to these rails so that I can extend it off the end of the table and make the cut. Looks like I'm kind of out of quarter 20s. Time for plan B. Um, obviously, I need to refine this a little bit. That's the first one. I'd say that went really well. Uh, the bit did not come out of the router. Always a good thing. I'm gonna go eat some lunch, come back and make some refinements, see if I can get the offset right here so that they're lined up properly. And then also uh, give them just a little bit more space in there. And you can see my, my depth of cut is a little bit, it was going a little bit too deep. So I need to bring that back just a smidge. All right, back from lunch, ready to get back at this. Time to refine this a little bit. I did not use an AB part file. I didn't use a Y offset. I was moving that far for the, if I do the X equals zero, half the bit, so that's 0.25. I've got it set at a uh, cut depth of 1.5. I checked with a rough, We're about a 30 second short angle issue because at this end, I just need to move the bit up a 30 second and deduct a 30 second from the cut depth. That'll make zing it 
uh, the offset. It's set here. Hopefully, when these two finish cutting, they'll be in one operation. They'll be ready to go. The first cut was actually a little off, so it took out of here. From here on out, I can just line these arrows up here and over there, and then um, just push my wood over against here, but still even that quarter inch gap, and we should be good. You can see the difference in offsets there. Uh, one other thing is that the, the cuts on the end of this weren't square, so that's why if you look, uh, let's see, if you look here, you can see it, it opens up a little bit as it gets to this end. And then if you look up here, it pops up a little bit as it goes this way, but a usable joint for garage projects, which is what I was trying to get that to initially. And then, you know, have the system down enough where I can do nicer furniture with that. Next up, a lap joint or a miter joint or something like that. Please like and subscribe. There's going to be a lot more coming up.